and the court went with the family from St. John. Uh, I'm not aware that St. John is any transshipment point either, but no, you, you hold on, let me, let me deal with this. Right. Let's, listen, the reality is that this gentleman has been in prison for 20 years. He is a stranger to the Barbadian um, community. He has turned his life around. I'm not going to say that that is the considered opinion of the of Assistant Superintendent of Prisons, Mr. Payne. It is the considered opinion of Father Ken Paul, both of whom wrote uh, reports on the state of Mr. Garcia's rehabilitation um, just prior to the end of his prison sentence. And I would say to Barbadians that we have to respect and trust the very system that we have set up. We have established a prison. We have established within that prison uh, a prisoner rehabilitation program. We have appointed experts to run that program. And when those experts say to you, look, over a period of 16 years, we have had this person. We have worked with this person. We say to you as professionals that in our opinion, this person has been rehabilitated. He is no longer any danger to the community. I'm saying to Barbadians, uh, we have to respect our own professionals. We put them there to do a job and we must, re we must therefore respect um, you know, the, the, the results of their work. And you know, many persons come out of prison, many persons go into prison, all sorts of crimes, come out without any rehabilitation reports and go back into society. At least in this case, we can say that the persons who should know, the experts that we have appointed, have given this particular um, person, uh, ex-convict, um, a, a clean bill of health, a, 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 an outstanding rehabilitation report. So at least we can feel some confidence about Mr. Garcia. There are many other persons who go in prison for sometimes for, for crimes uh, more serious than his and come out without any rehabilitation report. And we accept them. Of course, we don't have a choice because they are Barbadians. But I'm saying to Barbadians, when, when we look at the process that applied to him, um, everything was done. Um, you know, we don't live in a perfect world, so you, you will never have perfection. You, you will never have 100% guarantees. But the guarantee we have with him is certainly um, a, a much more significant guarantee than we have with probably 99% of the persons who who come out of prison. One of the things that I did as his attorney um, was to approach several governments uh, with a request that they accept Mr. Garrison. One of the governments I approached was the government of Venezuela. And I approached them, I approached the governments in an informal way and also in a formal way. I approached the Venezuelan government formally and I received a res formal response from the Venezuelan Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, the response I got was that um, Mr. Garcia was the responsibility of, the, of his native land or of the, the country that uh, he had attached himself to and not of Venezuela. Um, so to, to to make a long story short, Venezuela was not prepared to accept him. Venezuela felt that the, the usual, the typical um, international law positions should apply to Mr. Garcia. Um, the feedback I got from Caribbean um, governments or Caribbean leaders was that if Barbados refuses to take him, how can you then expect 
um, another Caribbean country to, to, to accept it. In other words, it would be um, politically very difficult for, um, say, St. Vincent, to just to use as an example, to take him. If the, if the Barbados government is refusing to take him, how could uh, a St. Vincent or St. Lucian government um, convince its people that it's right for them to accept him? So that, that was a problem that we were having. If, 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 if Barbados, if the government of Barbados has rejected him, then why should we, why should we take him? After all, at least he's lived in, he's been in Barbados for 20, almost 20 years. So, so that was the, that was the problem. Um, we also, we also approached the United Nations um, High Commission for Human Rights, uh, for, for refugees, sorry, and, and human rights via the UN coordinator here in Barbados at, at UN House. And, um, and we asked the United Nations to see what assistance they could give in, in, in finding a country for him. Um, so that connection has been made. Um, the UN uh, High Commission for Human Rights the service that they offer, they offer, as they explained to me, they offer several services. Um, sometimes they will assist with resources to assist uh, a country that has accepted a stateless person. So for example, were Barbados to accept Mr. Garcia, the UN uh, High Commission for Refugees could possibly uh, provide Barbados or any other country that accepts him for that matter with resources in relation to his, his, his maintenance and so forth. Um, there is a possibility that they could also help with finding a third country. Um, so all of those are still possibilities. All of those are still possibilities to be, to be worked on.